we are about to come under starter's orders now as the Rev Razor, Sean Emmett was looking down at his bike but now he's looking where he should be and that's straight ahead because they go out now and straight away, look at that start from Tom Reynolds, Tom Reynolds on the inside there, gets an absolute flyer but it is Dean Thomas that gets across on the Sendo Ducati into the first turn, absolutely perfectly so, it is Dean Bam Bam Thomas that's out front, Michael Runner in third place with Tom Reynolds just on the outside of him but has Runner got second? No, he hasn't. He's tripped himself right up because I think Emmett has come past him. Yes, he has. Emmett's on the inside of Thomas for that third position. Rutter is there, though. Rutter is still in third place as they blast out into the countryside now. You've got to get this set of corners absolutely right. We said in the opening, this is the fastest racetrack in the thick British Superbike Championship. And we are not lying. The lap record by the late, great Steve Hislop had over 115 mile an hour lap average. The man who actually holds the race record, though, I think it's Steve Plater who's here with us, so he'll be able to give us plenty of insight knowledge as far as that's concerned. Still, it's Michael Runner there in the, on the HM Blood Honda on bike number three in third place at the moment as they come through Church. 120 mile an hour at the uh, apex of that corner at the moment. Then they're building now as we come through that fast, fast, the corner of the street. It's not that crank right over, but it's 170 miles an hour here as they break down to the chicane for the first time. The club chicane, look at the two cows, Aki's in there at the moment. Glenn Richards, Glenn Richards on the outside of Sean Emmett, but it is Scott Smart of the Green Meanies that's there behind Rutter now. That was a great lap from Scott Smart to work his way up into fourth place in front of Sean Emmett. Well, Neil, I've done one lap, your turn. Yeah, Dean Thomas and John Reynolds getting perfect starts, clean starts. Dean Thomas looking good at the front here. He's always suffered towards the end of the race. He's really with cooking tyres. He's always really strong in qualifying, had four front rows positions so far this season, but never converted them into podium positions, so hopefully that might change today. Jers, as you said, has been nervous about tyres here. He's playing things nice and calm. A lot of it is about saving your tyres around here because the last half dozen laps is so important. Well, we'll just have to see how things pan out. Tyre conservation, somehow I don't believe it's going to happen here at Thruxton, but uh, tyres we keep talking about don't want to be boring. They're not, if you know what to, what to expect from them, but really nobody has covered a full race distance in practice or qualifying this weekend, as far as my knowledge is concerned. Certainly none of the top teams, because we've been around trying to find out what's going on. Church Corner then, as they then run up through Brooklands, it is Brooklands, it's this long, long, it's a left kink really, but it's as good as a straight, because it's absolutely flat out as we come to Woodham Hill and then into the club chicane. We're looking at third, fourth, fifth and sixth, but out front still, Dean Thomas. So Dean Thomas with his wife Karen on the pit wall. Well, it's the first time he ever got a pole position and really a race win wouldn't go amiss for that team. Sendo Ducati. They make mobile phones, they support the Ducati team of Enzo Di Clementi. Sounds Zealand. absolutely superb. You've got to ask whether they set that motorcycle up mainly for qualifying. Gary Mason, fastest lap on the Virgin Mobile Yamaha, 116.6. Well, Steve Plater, not a bad lap there, I'd say. Yeah, pretty good, and obviously typical for Upson, you know. It's like eighth place, it's going to get the fastest lap, and it's good, probably going to stay like this for quite a few laps yet. My belief is uh, Dean Thomas will keep plugging away, and JR will be quite happy to sit behind him for now until he gets threatened. Well, you know more about the uh, JR setup on the Rizzo Suzuki than anybody else in this commentary position, Neil McKenzie. I mean, what about tyres? I mean, it's a hell of a lot of horsepower. They're trying to push through at a hell of a lot of mile an hour on three massively fast turns. Yeah, John Reynolds finished up yesterday, actually quite happy with his race setup, but he tried some stuff Whoa. this morning. He tried lowering the rear just to get some, some more rear grip and to stop the bike back, and then he also tried a harder front tyre, but he didn't like any of it, so he's gone back to his original setup from yesterday. You can see Sean Emmett there. Number five having a go at Scott Smart I'll coming tell you up up. to final chicane, not quite close enough to make a pass. If, uh, Scott Smart is the last of the late breakers, that's for sure, so that chicane should really suit him. But uh, Sean Emmett is right on him. It was a Yamaha that looked to me like he was out on the dirt a little bit earlier on there, Steve Blady. He'd have been keeping an eye on what's going on there. But keep an eye on Gregorio Lavia in seventh place at the moment. Remember, every mile of this track he turns, he's learning because Gregorio Lavia on the second of the Rizzo Suzuki could be the first time you're giving a Spaniard the Rider of the Day award, Neil. You're going to have to keep an eye on that, remember? <laughs> yeah, Lavia made a, a not a brilliant start and really because it's so difficult he's never done a race here before at Thruxton running into that first corner into Allers is so difficult in the first lap so he's cautious which I think was smart but he's made making steady progress he's picking one off every couple of laps his lap times are good but he's got tangled up with Glenn Richards now, you can see him and Glenn Richards up the back. Well, not a bad man to be tangled up with, of course, he carries a lot of corner speed. Smooth is the operative. Uh, oh, yes, we've got a flag, red there's flag. a hand in the air, there must be a red flag then. Must be a, yes, there is a red flag, it's come up on our monitor. So, very, very swiftly from beneath the bushes came the red flag. Almost when we add the aggregates together, here we go then. We're about to go green. Who's going to get the flyer? 
Dean Thomas, a great launch from him. Scott Smart likewise on the Kawasaki. But look at that, Dean Thomas straight across the nose of Scott Smart. And into third place goes John Reynolds. And backwards goes, yes it was, Rutter. Rutter right back there behind Glenn Richards. So Michael Rutter on the HM plant Honda. Not a great start from him. He's got a lot of work to do here. Dean Bam Bam Thomas as he's known. Uh, a, a Flintstone character of course. Uh, Bam Bam being the baby I think of, uh, of uh, Fred Flintstone and co. And he looks a bit like Bam Bam, doesn't he? Glenn Richards had a worried moment going into turn one there. I think it might have had a bit of a collision with Michael Rutter, certainly. Well, Rutter Michael certainly Rutter's first lap, but he has got, he's back there in six or seven position, but Glenn Richards certainly had a worried moment going into Allard. So, we are on our way to the fastest parts of the course now. Goodwood rolling into Village Corner, and then it's a long drag out to Church Corner. 120 mile an hour in the middle of this corner now. And that is some speed to be drifting out onto the Brooklyn Strait. It is. We're looking at number 75. That is Glenn Richards, a likeable Australian in fourth place at the moment. But he's got the Yamaha man jam right in behind him. Looking for slipstreaming with the R1 into the braking area is Gary Mason on the Red Virgin Mobile Yamaha 6. And behind him, number three, the HM plant Honda of Michael Rudder, followed by Gregorio Lavia, the sub for Yukio Kakayama, the broken uh, collarbone to Yukio Kakayama. And behind them is 17. That's a Gentin Racing Yamaha of, of course, James and the best of the privateers so far but look at this number 12 on the Sendo Ducati it is Dean Thomas blasting away out front a 1.2 second lead overall uh, and I have to go on aggregate I'm looking at my monitor while you're looking at what's going on in the road Dean Thomas has a 1.2 second lead over John Reynolds for this race win and John Reynolds isn't even in the equation as far as on the road stuff's concerned because he's in a mess he's got the whole thing spinning up that's the third place John Reynolds on the road but he's in second place at this point in time on aggregate we'll try and keep you up to date as far as that's concerned with our straps that go along the bottom of your screen they are actually not what's happening on the road they are actually from our monitors the race positions the true race positions as corrected if you take into account the two aggregate races that will be added together so keep a look at our strip straps along the bottom of the screen that'll give you the true position as far as race position is concerned not the road position as you can see oh look at this Gary Mason around the outside on the other one up the inside no Glenn Richards last of the late breakers Gary Mason looked like he was going to try and force it Rutter can only watch on bike three Still, Glenn, sorry, go on. Glenn Richards and Scott Smart on the Kawasaki's have, have benefited most from this restart. See Scott Smart getting a blinding start there. John Reynolds right behind him there on the Rizzo Suzuki and trying earlier on that last lap in frustration to try and get past Scott Smart to get in touch with Dean Thomas because you, you just know that he's getting away and that's what's frustrating him. Okay, let me ask you, Neil, straight away, at what point in this race do we pull the pin? I mean, at the moment, we heard it, most of the team managers are saying it's a bit of enduro right up front. They've got to take their time, they've got to be smooth with their tyres, otherwise they'll have nothing left at the end of this race. When comes the point when they're riding on marbles? Well, I think John Reynolds is pulling the pin straight away because he doesn't want Dean Thomas to get too far in front. Already Reynolds stuck in the fastest lap, so he managed to get out of that wobble, get out of that tank slapper and get himself settled down. Now he's on the back of Scott's mark, but I reckon all these guys are pretty much flat out from, from when the lights change. You can see we say lap 5 of 22 on our caption. This, though, was a 20-lap restarted race at the moment. Dean Thomas, whoa, look at this. Oh, dear me. Dean Thomas has dropped a space to Scott Smart. Scott Smart has managed to pitch the lead. Has he? No, he hasn't. What am I talking about? I was looking back, wasn't I? I was looking back to the fourth-place person. I thought Scott Smart had got past for a moment, Dean Thomas. Maybe it's my eyesight nowadays, but uh, Rutter has got through Glenn Richards at last. Lavia's on the move. Lavia is there as well. Lavia passed, Lavia passed Gary Mason coming into the club chicane there. It's all going on, two groups at the moment, but the leading group is Thomas Reynolds and Smart, and that is their revised order, not their racetrack order. So, Dean Thomas, he's got to keep it smooth, he's got to keep it right. You can see already Dean Thomas wiggling around a little bit there. He's really hard on that side of the cat, really hard on the rear. And that's really can be a disadvantage here at the front. Very abrasive surface, very bumpy surface. It really upsets the rear of the bike. And if you're very aggressive, it's really hard on your rear tyre. You saw our aggregate times going across the bottom of your screen. That is the true position regarding who is where on the aggregate times of the two-part race that we are now uh, witnessing. But out front, Dean Thomas, he does love this part of the track, doesn't he? Long, fast, smooth. Perhaps reminds him of Phillip Island. Some of the big Australian places. Look at that, Thomas, 144 mile an hour. That's on our split time. That's not top speed. That is just go. That's the 144 mile an hour in the lead into Church Corner. That's hanked right over.
over between two right-handers. John Reynolds got a good drive through Church there, but it's yeah. so impressive that Kawasaki just oh! shows you how fast he is. And that's a barging manoeuvre. Well, Push Scott Smart really wide into club. Uh, payback, I feel. Uh, that was done, of course. You can hear the crowd clapping because they always appreciate a bit of a manoeuvre. John Reynolds said he was going to start bumping and barging, especially after he got laid out on the last bend of the last lap at Mondello Park in race one. Let's take another look at it. Well, it looked like Reynolds wasn't going to be able to get underneath Scott Smart. He really did give him a bit of a nerf there. I think, really, he committed himself to that and he couldn't do much else with it, Steve. I think that was more of a frustrated move. I think uh, Scott's been holding John up a little bit, probably probably down the straights, a little bit down the horsepower, but the thing's so nimble and tight, so good through the tight complexes. Steve Plater then giving us the angle as far as things are concerned from here in the commentary position, and I think judging by the uh, amount of ground that John Reynolds has made up so far, uh, you were probably right that uh, he was being held up very slightly. There is Michael Rudder in fourth place on bay number three, being followed by Gregorio Lavia, the sub for Yukio Kakariyama. Tell you what, Gregorio Lavia, well, I thought he must be a bit sick today because he's riding in a BSB race at a track that he doesn't know when he could be subbing for John Hopkins out of the Grand Prix of Mugello. I think I know where I'd rather be, but the fact of the matter is, his uh, Suzuki contracted him to come here and do this instead of the Grand Prix. The guy's a professional rider. He's really impressed me this weekend. It's not an easy track to come to and get on with, but he's oh, sussed it out and he's already he's challenging already Michael done. Rutter up the inside, oh, fantastic. Stitch that, now that is not an easy thing to do with Michael Rutter, but Gregorio Lavia showed his class and something that rhymes with it to Michael Rutter. So then, through has gone. 71, subbing for Yukio Kagayamo, his first time here ever. And, uh, well, only his second time on this motorcycle. He rode it at, what, Mallory Park earlier in the week? Second time, but, yeah, he did a season last year on the GSX-R1000 Corona Suzuki. Not in. like this one, though, is it? Exactly the same as this bike. But different regulations, so the bike is different horsepower, isn't it? Yeah, uh, pretty much the same. Slightly different throttle bodies, but maybe a couple of brake horsepower difference. But predominantly the same bike. Uh, and he come here, tried Yukio Kagiyama's settings, and then really went for it, settings that he used last year. Forgive me there, uh, Neil, of course, I was doing a bit of a Julian Ryder there, wasn't I? I was getting all specky and uh, anoraki there with, with the, the very slight and meaningless uh, technical details of motorcycle to motorcycle. So then, while we are talking about this man, Gregorio Lavia on the Rizzo Suzuki GSX-R1000, he now chases down Scott Smart for third place. Well, I can tell you, Perry Reba, who we're going to see a bit later on in the right look at that. Suzuki just drives around the outside of the ZX-10 and that will cheese off Smarty big time because there's no coming back of that even on the brakes coming down into there. Lavia has the fastest lap, 116.14 and that is something very special indeed. Gregorio Lavia, I was about to say, I was watching qualifying with the Superbike with Perry Reba, another Spaniard, he's come over to do the Super, Super Sports Championship, we'll see him in a little while for the MSS Discovery Kawasaki team and really he said Gregorio Lavia will be on pole. He didn't quite make that, he got tangled up with a few uh, back markers in his quick laps but look at him now he's really really right on it Gregorio very impressive and a contrast to Ryuichi Kianari who's another rider that hasn't been here before and also on a very competitive bike Kianari's really struggled here at Thruxton all the way down all the way through practice he's 18th in this race in the via already on the podium yeah, but fair enough, he's coming back for an injury as well, so we don't really know how much that's affected him. It's taken him longer to get over that than uh, I think your teammate Yukio uh, thought he should have done, but uh, he's back here in Thruxton and a benefit to the British Superbikes, but uh, an 18th place on that full works factory fire blade is uh, not what uh, Neil Tuxworth and team will... Uh, well, they won't let him get away with that for long, I would have thought. No comment. Thank you very much, Neil. You always help me out on the, on the really tricky stuff, don't you? Neil McKenzie there to stride the fence. I was waiting for Steve to say something. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just going to jump in there and say we're, we're oh, going. Sorry, Steve. Go on. It's going on to half race distance here, and uh, Dean Thomas seems to be struggling a little bit with grip and uh, dropping his lap times off a little bit. Also, the two Kawasaki's have dropped off, but uh, the Suzuki seems to be getting stronger and stronger. Well, you've got to say they've had uh, well two years now on these GSXR Suzuki. Uh, Paul Danning's team comes from Verwood down the road here. Well, it's their home track really, isn't it, Thruxton? It's the closest track to them. They are an enthusiastic, over-enthusiastic bunch, if you ask me. Oh, Sean Emmett bungs in the fastest lap now, 116.114. So Sean Emmett has just uh, destroyed Lavia's time, and I'm looking for the time. 115 and a half, I think, is Steve Hislop's lap record. So they're still not on Steve Hislop's lap record from uh, the year 2000. So, so much for all these improvements. Keith, do you want to ask me about Rizzo Suzuki team orders? There are none. 
<laughs> There's got to be team orders, I would imagine, because Lavier at the end of the day has got to be there to assist John Reynolds. It's a one-off right for him. He's not going to be doing anything else. I'm talking about Gregorio, of course. And John Reynolds is the series leader. So if there weren't team orders in this situation, I would believe someone at Rizzo Suzuki wasn't doing their job. Well, I don't think there was until this morning's morning warm-up when Lavier was fastest. I, and then I, I take it back. I take it then back. there was a discussion. And tell us the discussion. Come on, you're a party to what's going on in there. I'll tell you at the end. Thank you. As long as you tell us, I don't mind. So, Dean Thomas, under the severest of pressure, there is one, maybe two men, that were convinced that they would be able to win in this British Superbike race. Gregorio Lavia might be one man that was convinced he could do it, and Perry Reba was the other man that was convinced he could do it. I have to say that us cynics that sit around, I don't know whether you were one of the men, Neil, that will make three of the team that uh, perhaps thought he could do it, but really doing it, it's something special here. Well, Boston. I wouldn't have put Gregorio Lavia on the roster from here at Truxton on a one-off ride for one weekend. I just didn't. I respected what he did last year. He was a regular podium finisher in World Superbike races. Well, we know how hard this championship is, but it really has clicked with the circuit and got the very best out of that bike, and he's just storming through this field all the way to the front. We'll have to wait and see if he can get past Dean Thomas. Yeah. Then what he does is regards John Reynolds, his teammate for this weekend. Well, I, I, I sort of beck you, beckon you to look at our strap when it comes along the bottom of the screen, the red and blue strap that we give you. That is actually the true aggregate times of where they are in this race. It doesn't matter where they are on the road, it's all about aggregate times. This is a two-part race, so keep an eye on our strap. As through goes Lavia to lead a pretty Superbike Championship for the first time, and following him through is his teammate, John Reynolds. Well, I would uh, I would think that uh, Lavia must be under some kind of orders. Neil McKenzie, who has a, he is party to what's going on in the inner sanctum of uh, Rizzo Suzuki, he will know exactly what the orders were, but I would be surprised if he wasn't there to assist John Reynolds to the maximum points that he possibly can. Dean Thomas then suffers a two-part Rizla pass at the club chicane, and it is Gregorio Lavia. Well, he's never raced in a British Superbike Championship race before. He's never raced this particular GSXR Suzuki, and here he is leading at Thruxton, a racetrack he'd never seen before Friday. How impressive is that? These are the aggregate times. Keep an eye on him. Thomas still leads, despite being third. Reynolds is still second, despite being second, and uh, Gregorio Lavia is in third place overall, despite being first. Make sense of it as you will. Oh, Dino Thomas getting it all slithery now. He's going to try and hang on for the best he's worth, but you've got to keep an eye also on Rutter in fourth place, who I don't think is too far away, and he's just been done over, been done over by Emmett. Rutter has been passed by Emmett. Oh, now he really reckons that bike works really well around here. He says a 999, not quite so good on the nadgery tight little tracks, but this one where you can, well, shall I say, uh, let it have some head. He loves it. He certainly does, and Gregorio Lavia at the front there on Kageyama's bike. We've seen earlier this year that Kageyama's bike appeared to be faster than Reynolds' bike, and it certainly looks like that from Church up to the Club Chicane. That it's the slowed right down, the pace has slowed right down. I can see Steve Plater, if he, he's going to go boss eyed in a minute, he's staring at the monitor in here so intently. Uh, 117.6 was that last lap by uh, uh, Dean Thomas, whereas the others were on 17 and a half, so that's Lavia and Reynolds. So at the end of the day, it has slowed down till you get to Emmett and Rutter, where it's back in the 16s again. And that's why they've towed right back up. It's the front three getting slower, and uh, the uh, next bunch of Ducatis getting quicker. This place is awesome, Keith. Every year is the same. It's now, now a 10 wheel battle for the lead. Yes, and I think we're going to see more of it. Just for the Privateer Cup, of course, James Ellison is in ninth place overall, but leads the Privateer Cup race, the Superbike Cup, as it's now known for 2004. I'll get it right title in the end. And uh, James Buckingham is in second place in the Superbike Cup. Look at this. Through goes Sean Emmett on a mission now without Ducati. He said to me just before we came on air, he didn't have a qualifying setup, but he certainly had a race tyre setup. He said the bike works really well over long distance, and I think we can see Sean Emmett finally fighting back for Ducati, he's among the, well, what a class move, round the outside of John Reynolds. I love that chicane, I hate chicanes normally, but that one at club gives a spectacular racing every time. And Sean Emmett showing his class here, he's not had a win since Brands Hatch. We've got to go back a bit now for Sean Emmett. Brands Hatch, round two, and since then it's been a disaster. He had his wrist slapped by team owner Paul Bird. As far as his effort was concerned, the mechanics have had to work twice as hard to get that 999, something like on the pace. But look at it now, it really looks like a missile. Well, he's been happy all weekend with his race setup. You see him coming from 30 up to Club Chicane. 
Levia in front and, Jer and Emmett round the outside of JR in second. That's actually a John Reynolds move. I've seen him doing that at chicanes here and at Donington in the past. So Sean Emmett's been watching John Reynolds and learning. We'll have to keep an eye on the fastest lap, and it was Emmett, 116.8 on that last one. He's right on it as far as the times are concerned around here, being held up just a little bit maybe by JR. But now the run through Church Corner, 120 mile an hour in the middle of that corner, accelerating up to 170 miles an hour up to Brooklands, and then it's back down the gearbox for the chicane where we know Emmett is particularly good on the brakes because he passed Reynolds last time. Is he going to look up the inside? Yes, a lovely move. He went over John Reynolds. He went under his teammate Gregorio Lavia. It is the monster mob Ducati of Sean Emmett that leads this race at the moment. Well, I had a bet with Jonathan Green before we went into this race. I didn't dare say it at the start, but I said that I thought Sean Emmett, his race face looked right. He didn't look quite as casual as he does sometimes. He said to me that he'd got a race set up he was happy with even though qualifying wasn't that good and really he wasn't lying was he no he has been confident all weekend and maybe that's what he's had to do he's backs against the wall john reynolds having a look through the complex there up the inside of gregorio Livio because he can see john emmett getting away in front there well i can tell you he has got to get a half second lead over the other boys because you can see he's still half a second from leading this two-part race this aggregate race despite the fact Emmett leads he's actually in third place when you add the two parts of the race together so Emmett has got to get that motorcycle rolling out front as we look well we saw him go around the side outside of uh, John Reynolds a lap earlier and now he's underneath I just saw an oil flag actually being shown coming into club was that with a yellow as well Steve Plater no just his oil flag it's actually you can tell how determined he is that's the last two laps when he passed Reynolds and the Villa but on an oil, oil flag, flag. Oil flag without both laps it really does mean it well I apologize for not seeing that I know you at home will have spotted it uh, there's an oil flag as you can see there's an oil flag all the way around this racetrack in fact uh, coming down in the fast bit into this chicane so you can see oh and as I jump out of my seat as uh, Dean Thomas snaps it sideways in front of Michael Runner on by number three so still showing his determination as uh, mentioned by Steve Blader there despite the fact there was an oil flag and that means that there is some slippery substance down at Club Chicane don't mean you can't go as fast as you want to just means that maybe if you do go as fast as you Reynolds want to Reynolds has just got in front on the aggregate time now he's just got far enough away from Dean Thomas to put him in front of this race yeah but he's still got to deal with Emmett at the end of the day Emmett is now second Thomas has dropped to third overall now and there is only nine hundredths of a second between Emmett and Reynolds Reynolds leads but it's Emmett who actually leads on the road. He's got to pull away from John Reynolds. John Reynolds will know from his board. The team will have the board out to tell him exactly where he is regarding Sean Emmett. He won't try to beat Sean Emmett, I'm sure, but he will want to be somewhere close to him so he wins the overall race. As close as possible, and that's another thing as far as team orders goes. Although Olivier is in front of Reynolds, he's actually behind him. So as far as Olivier letting Reynolds pass, it's not a huge problem for John Reynolds' result. No, but uh, Gregorio Levia, of course, well, probably would want to win his own race. And here he goes underneath Sean Emmett. Sean Emmett fights back, though, on that slippery stuff. We don't know where it is. That's good for John Reynolds. It is good for John Reynolds because it holds up Sean Emmett perfectly. Do you know what? I, I, I have to say, I, 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 I don't want to suck up to Riza Suzuki and Paul Denning and his mob. As you know, my feelings regarding uh, teams are concerned. I try to stay pretty much independent, but you've got to hand it to this lot. You know, you make your own luck quite often, and they really do engineer situations that uh, are of their making, pretty much. I mean, they brought Gregorio Lavia in. You know, somebody somewhere had a brainwave, and uh, really, it's probably going to be the best thing that could happen, especially in this set of circumstances where Gregorio, if he has the pace to hold up Emmett enough for John Reynolds just to sit there in his slipstream, Riza Suzuki's teammate will win it for him. Well, Maybe I'm... you'll give the uh, Think Rider of the Day award to Paul Denning this week. <laughs> It is, it is the obvious choice. I mean, apart from maybe Matt Millad in the AMA Superbike Championship, Gregory Levia is the only other rider in the world with the sort of experience on the GSX-R1000 Suzuki, so it does make sense to bring him here. I must admit, when Paul Denning mentioned his name, I thought, yeah, good choice, but Thruxton, really difficult track to come to and, and be strong, but I was proved completely wrong. Well, it's nice to be proved completely wrong. It makes me feel better because you're supposed to be the resident expert in here. So Emmett under a lot of pressure now from John Reynolds, but John Reynolds doesn't need to do that. He just needs to sit in the slipstream of Emmett. Really, John Reynolds can do without making those kind of mistakes and running in a little bit hot, to be frank with you. And that was a big mistake coming in the club there because he's lost a whole lot of toe from Sean Emmett. I mean, at the end of the day, we've still got a long way to go in this race, and I'm sure Gregorio will slow the pace down to stop Emmett from getting too far away from John Reynolds, but that was a big mistake, Neil. It was, because John is close to Emmett, but he's, it's only 0.2. The, the gap has reduced Emmett. is actually oh, closer. That's Glenn Richards down Glenn Richards. at the complex. 
at the club hairpin then, I think, is that or is that complex? I thought that was at the complex, it could be wrong. Sideways on, it is a chicane, it's Gregorio Lavia though that still leads on the road, but Gregorio Lavia, number 71, subbing for Yukio Kagayama. Yukio, well you better watch out mate. <laughs> if your demands for wages next year are a bit high, we might be having a Spaniard in place of the Japanese. Gregorio Lavia still holding on to Emmett, holding up Emmett I should say, and hoping I'm sure that uh, John Reynolds will be able to get back in touch. Not that he'll know it until he gets round to his pit board and sees exactly where JR is. Communication-wise, remember there's no ship to shore as far as uh, the communication with the riders are concerned here, unlike some car racing. So the fact is that Lavia won't know quite what to do. Reynolds has got a problem as well. Reynolds has definitely got a problem. He's slipping back off Could the pace. Could be from C. Dean Thomas has caught him up there. Yeah, John Reynolds, he's running a bit hot in some of these turns and I don't think he's going to have the pace to win this race. Well, what John Reynolds was worrying about was his bike backing in. He says he hates when it starts the back end. He's working hard and Emmett Reynolds yeah. just still in the lead by point three, zero, zero, three, three thousandths of a second. Three thousandths of a second then, Reynolds still has the lead overall from Sean Emmett. It is Lavia still in third on corrected time, despite the fact he doesn't lead this race anymore. And yes, he does lead this race anymore. Well, typical complex Lavia manoeuvres there. Lavia is doing such a good oh, job for John Reynolds. He's brilliant, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> are we allowed to uh, give the Think uh, Superbike Rider well, of the Day award to a Spaniard, an incomer for a one-off race? You mentioned Lavia. There's Glenn Richards, and we can take a look at this crash now. Talk us through it, Neil. Yeah, into the chicane. He missed the chicane oh, over the kerb. Yeah. That's a hard fall. He's I wouldn't be surprised there. if that's not a collarbone. It was nasty. So then, this is your this is your fight, not just for the lead on the road, but the lead on aggregate times. Emmett is the meat in the sandwich. Reynolds has regained some composure, but I feel that's more down to the fact that 71, that man there, Gregorio Lavia, has held up Sean Emmett. As we come into the braking area now, Sean Emmett will die for the inside. Will he have the pace? Oh yes. He's <laughs> wide. Take wide. that. Yeah, he's pushed him wide. Quite right too. Oh, oh God, JR. <laughs> Second time we saw him do it. Last time it was to a competitor. This time it was to his team. Mate. Still, he's lost too much time. Though. He, he has lost too much alone. time on Emmett. And they go over the line. It's Emmett the lead. Emmett leads now by one tenth of a second from John Reynolds, from Dean Thomas, who's moved up in the third place. Rutter has gone up to fourth uncorrected, and Lavia has dropped to fifth, courtesy of all that manoeuvre at the club chicane. That's how quick it can change when you've got an aggregate two-part race. There it is. Emmett Reynolds Thomas as they come across the line. Rutter, Lavia, Smart. These are not on the road figures. These are aggregate corrected time. Sorry to keep banging on about it, but pay attention. The danger for uh, for Reynolds also is Rutter's only two tenths off of uh, Dean Thomas on the time, sh on the time schedule, so he can get a second, uh, third place. John really needs to get his head down now and do everything he can to get on the back of Emmett. Got to keep it smooth, JR. He's looked a little bit wild in a couple of places, of course, when you've got all that ho much horsepower to play with. Well, Sean Emmett, he said he liked his race setup. I don't see him being caught and balked by two Rizzo Suzuki's anymore because he is way off the front now. We're on lap 20 or 22. This is the second part. We had a two lap classification for the first part when it was stopped when Dijon Compton went through the fence. Well, Lavia shouldn't do that. Well, that's not a good team move. Only if he can tow John Reynolds along. Is Lavia's pace good enough to tow John Reynolds or is he just balking? It makes no difference where they are at the moment, to be frank with you, because John Reynolds isn't doing the business good enough to be in Emmett Slip. And that's where he lost the ball time on Emmett now. Oh, point eight of yeah, a second. Point eight. So really, John Reynolds has lost a load. Rutter. Well, he's going to be on the podium. He's 1.453 seconds behind Emmett as well in third place. Lavia is up to fourth. Dean Thomas has dropped to fifth on corrected time now, and Scott Smart is in sixth place on corrected time. James Ellison continues to impress me. He's in eighth place overall, and by far and away the best of the Superbike Cup riders. Remember. If you need reminding, of course, there are two races going on within this race. One for the works boys, one for the privateers. Not that there's a lot of difference nowadays between the standard of both sets. Look at Emmett. Well, hats off to that man, didn't quite catch who it was, but Emmett not being bought along these fast three right-handers through Goodwood Village. This is Church Corner now. Church really is a dramatic corner. In fact, this is Church Corner now that it's coming to. 150 mile an hour on the way into that, 120 mile an hour at the apex. Building up now. Top gear, top gear now, 170 miles an hour on the Rutter's alongside the Reynolds. Yeah, Rutter's gone through Reynolds as well. Well, that'll be interesting to see because uh, there was six tenths of a second between Rutter and Reynolds at the line last time. And uh, remember, we're looking for these corrected times. We're trying to keep you up. Last lap flag's just come out. I just saw it come out, so they're on their last lap now. 
the yellow flag with the black cross on it is the last lap flag if you saw it sean emmett has got this one in the bag 1.7 seconds with his lead over rutter in second place lavia in third place reynolds in fourth place as they cross the line dean thomas in fifth place scott smart in sixth place Gary Mason on the Virgin Mobile Yamaha in seventh place and eighth overall, but the best of the privateers, James Ellison on the Gentin racing bike. What a day of racing so far. Sean Emmett, well I have to say, no one can deny it. Sean Emmett and Paul Bird uh, this win. I thought that at some stage uh, we were going to have a major fallout between Birdie, the team owner, and Sean Emmett because really it looked like it was going all awry. This could put them back on track. Very good effort and fair play to the team and to Sean Emmett. They struggled a bit for a few races, but they've all dug in. He's come back stronger than ever, and this was really a fantastic result winning here at Thruxton. Well, he's 102 points behind John Reynolds in the championship, but there's, what, another seven rounds to go after this one. So he's still got 15 races, including today, 16 races, including this one, left in the championship. Let's take a look, then, who's going to be where I at the end of this lap. Emmett is certainly going to win it. Oh! He's, he's lost, lost it. it! He's, he's lost, lost it. it! He's lost it on the line! Incredible stuff! It is going to be... Lavia! Rutter! Rutter wins! Rutter wins from Reynolds, Emmett and Lavia. So Rutter wins. That is going to get Sean Emmett the biggest slap he's ever had when he gets in the Monster Bob Ducati camp. Paul Bird will be absolutely, absolutely spitting bullets. Oh, I'll tell you what. If he's not grown a couple of donkey's ears on his way around on the slowing down lap, I don't know who will have, because at the end of that race, the official results after a two-parter, we can't have more drama in a weekend than we get in one race here at Trucks, and it always happens. Michael Rudder, the winner then, in the end. What a gift for Michael Rudder. Second in the championship he is at the moment, and uh, really boosting his chances there with 25 points. 20 points again go to John Reynolds. Sean Emmett gets just the 16 that goes with third place I've got nothing else to say Gregorio Levere in fourth Dean Thomas well they will be disappointed with that in fifth place but it was still a good ride Scott Smart sick again he will be disappointed not half as disappointed as his teammate who may or may not have a damaged shoulder after that crash at club Gary Mason the best of the Yamahas there in seventh place and James Ellison best of the privateers Tommy Hill last year's graduate from the R6 Cup up in Superbike and ninth place for him in front of Kieran Clark Colin Appleyard's runner as well on the Hydrex Racing plant tyre company uh, motorcycle that's a, a good outfit there Kieran Clark not a bad result for him in 10th in front of Craig Coxall that's the V-Trans Honda James Buckingham uh, the uh, privateer second place in the privateers for him Ryuichi Kianari 13th place I think someone will be saying the same to him in Japanese though that that's not acceptable being in 13th place John Kirkham Stuart Easton gets the last point good to see Stuart actually scoring points but he is going to be laid off at the end of the Thruxton race meeting by Alistair Flanagan, the team owner, till he gets his head together effectively. There it is then, Reynolds. <laughs> Can't believe it. John Reynolds again. Well, he loses a few points. Uh, it was a 33-point gap. Now it's a 28-point gap between him and Michael Rutter. Rutter, <laughs> he must be smiling from ear to ear. Yukio Kagayama still holds that third place at the moment. Uh, but, of course, he's out for this weekend. He'll be back at Brand. Scott Smart for Sean Emmett. It should have been... Another five points, should have been 120, 26 points for Sean Emmett there, but it's not. Fifth place still for him anyway. Dean Thomas, Ryoichi Kianari, and the luck.